welcome to the CGTN live stream. I'm Simpson Wiscott and I'm here today at Unique Garden Ideas in Beijing. The COP15 Biodiversity Conference is underway in Kunming in southern China, so we thought we would take this opportunity to talk a little bit about biodiversity. We're all aware of the growing impact of climate change and the need to protect the environment. Biodiversity is a part of that and plants are a huge part of our lives. Can you imagine life without trees, without grass, without flowers? So to discuss all of this, uh, we have invited a few guests and we also have some fun activities planned. Don't forget to follow us on our social media platforms. That's Facebook, Twitter, Weibo, YouTube, uh, Yang Shipin, uh, TikTok, and of course, our CGTN app and website. So let's get started. I'm going to meet my friend Eddie here. Hi, Hi. Eddie. Oh, Hi, already Shipin. busy at work. Yes. Hello. Hi. Hey. So tell me, what are you doing here? I'm planting some lovely little plants. Succulents. I'm oh. creating this little view box. Very nice. Mm. So Eddie, I think we can describe you as a plant lover, plant enthusiast. Hobbyist, you, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Tell us a little bit about that. Okay. Uh, I love plants since I can remember things. I grow hundreds of them in my house now. Oh, hundreds? Yeah. Wow. Mainly uh, orchids. Okay. Yeah, I love them. So I love plants with uh, lots of beautiful flowers. Mm -hmm. But also, I choose today to do something different. Oh, uh, these nice. ones are like with the beautiful patterns. Oh, I like yeah. this. Can you touch them? Are they gonna? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Gonna... <laughs> it's fine. Well, because certain succulents, you know, I'm not going to touch that one, mm, for example. Of course but, not. You know. Oh. So how like, they strike me as very easy to take care of. Is Quite. That, yeah? They don't like much water. Mm. So that's the reason I put layers of these little rocks inside. Okay. All right. And not only because it's, they're looking very beautiful, mm. but also they drain water properly mm -hmm. so they can live inside properly. Mm -hmm. mm. Okay. And yeah. Um, is this something like, do you often make boxes like this at home or? Not really. Only, uh, uh, only when I want to create something mm. as a little, like, a, you know, fun thing to to do mm -hmm. like feel the joy mm -hmm. <laughs> and i have a little uh, this little fellow i want to introduce yeah. to you this is a air plant air? wait air this is plant. it yeah that's it it doesn't need any dirt it's well. not even planted in soil it's just no but okay. but it does have root so you can see from here these are roots this yeah oh wow yeah so in a while they grow on the tree box okay so they just need, uh, need to absorb water from the air. So when you grow it, you just spray water to it and have some sunlight to it and it can flower for you. So this <laughs> grows on trees. Yeah. And you can also just have it in your house in a cute little basket like this. Exactly. This is low maintenance. I like this. This is my kind <laughs> yeah, of plant. Exactly. <laughs> yeah, it's very That's popular very... now. Yeah. And you said it flowers also. Yeah. Oh, wow. Mm. This is very cute. I like it's that. It's very, very nice. And this one is live. It's not dead, right? It's, it's like alive. This, it's not plastic either. It doesn't either. look like there's anything <laughs> to it, but I like these. I never heard of the air mm. plants. Very, very cute. much like this. Yeah. So we are going to uh, finish this box yep. very soon. Mm -hmm. So uh, do you think you want to add some more plants into oh, it? Oh, I don't know. Well, <laughs> I mean, we can show this to the camera a little oh. bit. I mean, yeah, of course. beautiful little layering and everything. I have a feeling that if I add anything, it's mm. just going to of ruin course. it. <laughs> you can also add some. Uh, yeah, oh wow! Rocks. Wait, I thought this was gravel. It's not gravel. No, it can it's absorb really... water. Yeah. Okay, this give... feels like rice crisps, crispies. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> so light. Okay, the, this. Okay, this yeah, is actual gravel. Rocks, yeah. Okay. Oh, very nice. Oof! I don't know. You're the artist, so I want to uh, leave it to you. Well, if if we don't think so, we need. Need to do much work. We can just uh, maybe give it there's like, like a little bit, like a little something yeah, here. Yeah, you can. A small what about the color? This uh, darker or lighter? Oh yeah, maybe like a little bit of the darker one. Yeah, that's quite I nice. I agree. Yeah. Can add to it, ah, and then we can use the tool. I'm not wearing gloves ah, now. Ah, very nice. To give it a little bit. Oh, yeah, okay. So a little bit of shape. Yeah, okay. it's like a. Little okay. Alley in the middle. <laughs> a little pond in the middle. Yeah. Like that. Okay. Mm. So what is it? I mean, you said like you've loved plants since as long as you can remember. Yeah. What is it? What is it about plants that that you love so much? Uh, they also uh, they always bring me uh, freshness, mm. and when they flower, I feel oh I succeeded doing something. Oh, okay. <laughs> and uh, I feel like they're 
when they're flowering, they are like smiling to me. Oh, that's so nice. So feel like, oh, I have something living along with me, and uh, uh, they're beautiful. Uh, life is beautiful. Oh. And you said you have, you live in Beijing. Yeah. You have hundreds of plants <laughs> yes, in a I house do. in Beijing. How big is your house? <laughs> the house is not very big, but we changed the rooftop into a okay. garden. Right. So uh, I have a lot of pots with different kinds of flowers in it, mainly uh, orchids. But mm. now I have to move them indoors. Oh, okay. Yeah, it's getting colder so it's in like Beijing. It basically feels like a jungle indoors, I'm guessing. It in is. the winter. <laughs> <laughs> but it's a nice feeling, it's a very nice feeling. So, okay, do you have any uh, tips? for people like me who are not very good at keeping plants. I need simple plants. <laughs> but like, well, yeah, any tips on like how to keep plants, what kind of plants to go for? Yeah, you need to choose the ones that um, are resistant, mm. like uh, simple ones like these. Mm. I always like them, they're very cute, They're very right? cute. Yeah, and you don't need to overlook after them. Okay. Like not overwatering them or, mm. and give them a bit enough sunlight and some air circum circumstance, like, mm -hmm. yeah, they will be fine. Oh, very nice. Yeah. And then what about orchids always sound like a really difficult flower to They take are quiet. Yeah. But the thing is that the myth is orchids doesn't really need lots of watering. Okay. You just need to spray water to it. Okay. And uh, uh, when they're flowering, you don't need to spray any water onto the flowers. Mm. So a, a bit sunlight, it doesn't need to require uh, much sunlight for them. So actually, I think they are quite easy to keep. Oh. Yeah. And then how do you know, like how much research do you need to do when you're getting a plant? Because some of them want direct sunlight, some mm -hmm. do not like direct sunlight, mm -hmm. some need a lot of water, some need just a little bit. So, yeah. Yeah, you need to, internet is powerful. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> now you can learn something from it first uh -huh. and then you need to know about your house. Mm. Yeah, if you, your house is like very sunny in some area, you want to put a plant mm -hmm. or it's quite you know, moist and not much sunlight in some other corners, mm. you can choose the right plants for the right corners. Mm. The people normally give very good recommendations uh, on, online, maybe not in shops. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Yeah, so uh, you can choose the right ones. Okay, yeah. that, that's a good tip because it's true, like a lot of the time, if, if I go to, the, to, to a shop or if I'm looking for, uh, for, for plants, I'm going to look, think of like pretty plants or like yeah. things that appeal to me, but I'm not thinking of where do I plan on putting it in my exactly. house. And as you say, it's very, very important. Yeah. Um, I, from what I've heard, it seems that a lot more people are getting interested in plants and having oh, them at home. Is yeah, that? Definitely yes, yeah? definitely yes. Um, plants is definitely one part of your life. And lots of people saying that plants can change the, your indoor air. Mm. Yeah, make it a bit fresher, mm. which is true. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and uh, for me, I always like to see some green leaves in the in the in the room to make me feel like cheered up, like I'm not the only living thing in, the, yeah. in this okay. in this house. Yeah, and it's like you know oxygen and like fresh, like you said, yes. fresh air and yeah. a little bit of beauty. Yeah. And I like the fact that you said you know uh, when they flower, it feels like you achieved something. Exactly. Yeah? and they're smiling to me. That you know when they flower, it means the plants are very happy. Mm. So I feel like I make them happy, I'm very happy too. Ah. Yeah. I like the fact that you give them a personality. Yeah. Then you see them as like having a character. Exactly, exactly. I, and I normally feel them like, if I live in a corner, how do I feel like? Uh -huh. So I feel like I will be happy that inside so should we shall we go meet them yeah definitely yeah? yes okay great let me, uh, carry yeah this. let's take yeah. our work wonderful well no my work his work <laughs> <laughs> eddie's no. work okay is this your first time here at uh, yeah. unique garden ideas oh uh, this is a very lovely place yeah, look at the nice. ponds it's like a, it's just a nice sort of like oasis in the middle of the city exactly. and getting a little breath of oxygen uh. so. Like you said, plants just like make people. I know, look at the flowers. Oh. Like in the fairy tale. <laughs> Very interesting. Exactly. For, like such huge flowers for such a small tree. That's right. Mm. All right, oh. okay, there are our next guests. Oh. Hi. Hello. Nice to see you. Hi, morning. Hi. 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 I'm Sim Sim. Hi. Hello. Hi. Hello. Nice, Hi. To you. nice to meet you. Let's sit down. Yeah. Let me put this down. All right. 
Okay, so um, I'm going to let my guests introduce themselves a little bit. Ladies first. Yeah, Thank go you. ahead. Tell me a little bit about what you do. Okay, good morning, everyone. My name is Ye Han. Um, I'm a new naturalistic planting designer okay. and also I'm a researcher. So my work is mainly about creating natural like uh, um, planting design in the city and the suburban areas. And also my research is focused on urban forest. Um, I do quite a lot of uh, um, ecological based um, herbaceous planting uh, communities okay. in the city. Wonderful. So then you're a PhD student, yeah. candidate? I studied uh, biodiversity conservation and plant taxonomy. Planet Taxonomy and the Institute of Botany, the Chinese Academy of Science. Okay, all right, so we've got the expert here. <laughs> and then as we were saying, Eddie, you're not involved professionally with no. plants, but in a personal capacity. Exactly, as a hobby. <laughs> okay, all right, so we've got a good, good very diverse panel here. Uh, so thank you for joining us uh, today. Um, so, yeah, let's first get, you know, how did you first get in, interested in plants? What's your story? And so, like, yeah, who, how, what was your first, uh, uh, what first made you interested in finding a career in, 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 okay. in your area? So um, I studied landscape design uh, in Beijing, uh, Beijing Forest University, and I learned um, half of the plants uh, during the design work. And I gradually realized um, this is uh, life, same as us. So I think like they are very interesting and then I go outside um, into the UK and study uh, landscape um, mainly about uh, ecological landscape and uh, I do quite a lot of field trips in all over the world in different continental areas and see all these plants in the wild and uh, gradually um, I think like uh, they are very attractive in the wild and I learn from the wild so my main job from that on is about like uh, learn from nature and take these plants into the urban settings and try to transfer all these like uh, very good looking planting communities into design language. So I do quite a lot of job is um, get native plants and to be um, just like uh, get more people realize uh, here these plants are really good and they can tolerate quite a lot of different conditions and also they can be very very nice for the future's landscape green space. Mm -hmm. What about you, Sita? What made you interested in this? Uh, why did you decide to like study this, uh, like plants uh, and botany? For, for me, plants are both aesthetic and practic. I studied plant taxonomy and uh, biodiversity rich area in west of Hunan. Mm. Okay. Mm, I think it's really interesting, and I can find many happy in plants. Oh, okay, yeah, it's the same thing as Eddie. You were saying also, you feel very happy being around exactly, plants, right? Exactly. Um, okay, so uh, let's get to a few tougher questions now. So, how many species of plants are there, oh. approximately, in all of China? We're not even talking the uh, world, but all of China. About 41,000 higher plants are distributed in China. 41,000 plants, oh, okay, yeah. types of plants, okay. Yeah. And how many of those are endangered? About 10.84 are certain species, according to an evaluation in 2013. Mm, okay, so about like one in ten yeah. plants is endangered. That's wow. really like yeah, huge. Yeah, it's a large number of certain species. Mm. When talk, talk about endangered species, I have a question to ask all okay. guys. Oh. All right. Do you know Paris? I know the city, Paris. Paris? Paris? Uh, no, no. <laughs> a famous Chinese herbal medicine. Oh, okay. Oh. All right. I have taken a photo. I have taken a photo. Uh -huh which include three species of uh, Paris. Okay. Can you find the differences? So they're all the same family? They're all Paris? Yeah, the okay. same family and the same genus. Mm. Different leaves? Different numbers of leaves? Different colors? Yeah, and this one has got beautiful little... Yeah. Yeah, so all, all you describe is right. And now I will tell you which mm -hmm. species they are. The first one is uh, Paris polyphylo, with many leaves. Mm -hmm. You can see. And this one also with many leaves, but it's not showing the picture. <laughs> 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 but we can see from the picture that the inner petal, this one is, is inner petal. Mm. Uh, the margin is undulate. Okay. So we call it Paris undulata. Oh, Paris undulata, okay. But this one, you can see the, with relative less leaves. Mm. And it's collected in the area, area of Da Ba San. Okay. So we call it Paris. Basan ensis. 
Oh, oh. Uh, so the, the name of plant can tell us some interesting information. Okay. Uh, do you know any plants which are named after famous botanist? I don't even uh. really know most <laughs> names of plants most of the yeah. time. <laughs> <laughs> I'll take a picture. Uh. Okay, all right, yes. That helps. In this picture, two plants are named after famous botanist. Can you find it? Which one? Which plants are named after the Chinese botanist? I'm going to see guys. B. Let's see. C is right, B is not right. Oh, no. <laughs> I B? guess A. Yeah, A, C is right. A, oh, okay. So A and C? So A okay. is Zen Yi, so no and C is. Uh -huh. It has leaf large, stipule, and uh, united with steam. This is different from other species. Uh, it's collected in the Nong Jia of Hubei province. Okay. And it's named after Professor Zen Yi Wu. Mm -hmm. okay. Who had studied Chinese plants for over 70 years. 70 years, wow. I, l I like the look of it. It's got the leaves and the drooping, I'm not sure what those yeah. are. Flowers? Are they flowers? Seeds? Seeds? It's maybe. poisonous. Oh, it's poisonous. <laughs> yeah. Okay, maybe not that, so pretty. <laughs> and the third one is Childendron, Dioecium. Okay. From the Latin name we can know, it's Dioecious. And uh, Dendron, you know, it means wood plants. Okay. In Latin name. Okay. Or the chai. Um, oh. Is chai? Chai is, chai is a vegetable? No. It's the, <laughs> it's the family name of uh, the botan botanist. Oh, uh, okay. Uh, oh, that's it's confusing. a really famous botanist, uh, Professor Xi Tao Chai, oh. who devoted all his life to study Chinese plants. Oh, okay. So, but can we eat it? Uh, no, no, no. Also oh. poisonous. Oh, no. <laughs> oh, dear. Well, that's confusing though if it's called chai but I you know. can't eat it, right? Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> oh, no. Uh, just saw the question. Okay. All, all of us stayed in Beijing. Do you know any famous plants in Beijing? Mm, very Pretty local. <laughs> Not sure. <laughs> maybe, <laughs> maybe you can maybe. point in this picture. Okay. Uh, Which one? Which of the You maybe know. This is Beijing. quite pretty. Yeah, I would say A also. How about you? Ah, I know, it's B. I've been, I saw that before. In oh, yeah. Mantel Go, yes. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, in Western Beijing. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. B is a Clematis. Okay. Uh, Acerifolius. You see the leaves. Uh huh. Uh, pentagonal. Oh. Okay. And the maple like. I see. Okay. Uh, so oh. it's a specific epithet is uh, Acerifolia. Oh, okay. Yeah. It's, so a, it's a really beautiful flo flower. Is it very common? Can you find it everywhere in Beijing? Uh, no, no. It's just a distributed in Beijing and Hebei province. Oh, okay. But mm. can you find it everywhere in Beijing mm. and Hebei? Or? Mm, no, no, just the local cliff. Oh, wow, okay. It grows on local cliff. Oh, okay. Oh. And oh, the flower wow. in Oplo. Okay, wow. Places that are hard to reach. Exactly. <laughs> How can yeah. we see the flowers when they jump off the cliff? <laughs> <laughs> I drive around the road, I saw that on the cliff. Oh, yeah. okay. Oh, oh, from the bottom yeah. of the cliff, you can see, yeah. not from the top of the cliff. <laughs> no, from the bottom of the cliff. Look at it from the bottom. I've also yeah. taken two interesting plants from, okay. from, right. from our garden. Ah. This is all very practical. Yeah, it <laughs> Ooh, okay, all right. The first one, you can tear the leaves. This one? Yeah, tear the leaves. Tear the leaves? Yeah. Be careful. Very, oh, I feel very bad to do that. What do you have seen? Let me, let me try it. Yeah, if you tear it very lightly, there's. there's so like you're just damaging it. <laughs> <laughs> there's some some like little strings. Like yeah, they like very things. like sort of filament. It feels a little you, bit you sticky. You also can tear the flutes. Flutes. So this yeah, is the flutes. Yeah, you can have a try. So what is this? More filament. Oh. More filaments. In yeah, the flutes. same. You see that? Oh wow. Yeah. Wow. Oh yeah, it almost What's looks like, like a silk thread, but like exactly. More. Yeah. What what is this? Yokomia. Yokomia. Amois. Okay. We call me Amois. It's a poisonous, is, is it? Uh, no. Ah, it can because we can kill that. <laughs> it can use that as medicine. We're all going to drop dead. Yeah. <laughs> it can, the leaves oh, wow. I don't know if the camera can see this. No, this is like too small, but yeah, you can. This is very cool. That's very is it cool, like, yeah. it feels like latex, rubber, is that? Yeah. Yeah? The bark of this tree can use that as medicine to lower oh. the flood pressure. Oh, wow. Yeah. Can you find, well, where is this from? Is it from Beijing? Uh, common cultivated in Beijing. But the wild resource is okay. also rare. Oh, okay. All right. Oh, this is very I think this one you maybe know. This yeah. one I know. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it's a jinko tree. <laughs> but do you know, it's a really ancient relict. Is it? It, uh, it once 
coexist with dinosaur. With a dinosaur? Ah. Yeah. Okay. I did not realize it was that old. <laughs> Obviously. It, it has witnessed the witness that Extinction of a dinosaur. because oh. <laughs> I, I know in school you learn about ferns and those yeah. kinds of plants that were around a long time ago, but I never heard about jinko trees being yeah. around. So, oh, new appreciation for mm. this. Yeah. Oh, I just love the shape. I also take another too. thing. Uh huh. You know this? This looks like ferns. Is it fern? No. Do you know? Uh, Chinese, <laughs> I know the Chinese name. Shushan, right? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Its Latin name is Mat. Metasequoia. A sequoia? Me Metasequoia. Oh, Metasequoia. Okay. Metasequoia. Ah. It's firstly identified by Japanese scholar uh -huh. according to fossil records. Oh, okay. And then Chinese researchers collected it in Mo Dao Xi of Li Chuan County in Hubei province. Okay. Mm -hmm. And then, after carefully study, Professor Wang Junzheng and Xian Su Hu jointly published it. So we call it a living fossil. Living fossil. Okay. Yeah, living fossil. All right. Wow. Very nice. Really beautiful, I think. So, yeah, <laughs> I like yeah, it has a story. Yeah. 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 It, it's interesting because I think a lot of the time we just sort of go through life, unless we have lots of plants at home that we get to know them or that yeah. we work with plants. I think most of us just go through life thinking, mm. oh, okay, well, there's trees, but not mm. really getting to know what the tree. So, uh, uh, it's, it's, it's it's very interesting to find out the the history behind the names and the history about yeah. behind yeah, the each plant has a has a has a story. Yeah, oh. each plant has a like story. Like us. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, exactly. It's like, I mean, it's like you were saying. Like in a way, they're also kind of like humans. You know, they've got exactly. like a personality. They yeah. have a story. Yeah. So new appreciation for for them. Yeah. Um, Earlier, I was given uh, a task to go find two trees in a park also. So let's see how that went. Here, we've got a video. I'm at Beijing's uh, Garden of World Flowers, a botanic garden, as you can see, with hundreds and thousands of exotic and indigenous species of flowers and plants. And I have been given a task today, which is to find a waxberry tree and a cycus. So I have two pictures here, and I have to find these two in this massive park. Should be a piece of cake, right? It's <laughs> like a fake koala out there. It like, gave me a fright. So now I'm in the succulents area. Kind of feels like I landed in the desert all of a sudden. But this doesn't really look like the place where I will find this tree. So I guess I keep going. Oh, I like this tree. Um, I forget the Latin name for it, but uh, they call it the Chinese bottle tree also. Um, the shape and also because it contains a lot of water. I mean, try and guess how much water there is in there. There can be up to two tons of water inside this trunk. Big reservoir. I just love the shape. Oh, wow. It looks like a pipe cleaner. It's quite soft also. I've never seen anything like this. I wonder what that is. Ooh, you wouldn't mind having that at home. <laughs> okay, I'm a little bit lost now. Wait, I think we came, we came from there, we went there. Can I go down here? There's... Looks a bit palm tree-like, but don't think this is it. Hmm. This is harder than I thought. Later. This park is a lot bigger than it looks from the outside. It actually looks quite small, but then I've been getting lost for the last hour and ooh, wait. Oh, yes, I found it, yes. Psychus revoluta. Oh, okay, so it doesn't really, well, it looks a little bit like a palm tree. Yeah, okay, one down, one more to go. Oh wow, I know this one. I don't know what it's called, but I used to have that at home. So cool. it's, it's it's furry, really funny, like purple green, and they grow so well. You just can 
cut off a branch and like stick it in soil and it just starts growing and it just doesn't stop so you can, that's why I think that they have so many of them because it's probably just one plant and it keeps growing okay I'm almost at the exit so hopefully the trees are in here because otherwise I walked by it and completely missed it Is it? it? Looks a little bit like it. Not sure. Well, this is the closest I've seen. So I'm going to say that this is the second tree. Mission accomplished. And uh, yeah, not an easy task. I thought it was going to be easier than this, but there's a lot of trees, a lot of different plant species here, so uh, they look very different when you see them next to each other, but at the same time, if, you give, if you're given one picture to find, not that easy. So uh, yeah, this is fun. Okay, now uh, please explain to me why I've been looking for these trees. Okay, so Siedan, yes, please explain to me why I was looking for uh, those two trees and what was so special about them. Do you know what's berry? Waxberry, it's yeah. fruit, right? Also, yeah, a, yeah, yeah. Uh, you very can sour. eat those. Yeah, you can find them. Yeah, yeah. How will you eat? I've eaten it. Yeah, yeah. It's very nice. It's yeah. a little bit sour. Yeah, yeah. 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 It's a really famous uh, fruit in south of China. Okay. And uh, it's bark is rich in tannin, oh. and can use the eyes, rusted rusted dye, and uh, astringent in medicine. Oh, okay, so you can you, you can eat the fruit, but you can also use the bark for coloring yeah, and yeah. for medicine. And oh. it's also widely used in landscaping. Landscape? Oh, yeah, landscaping. can you, do you agree? <laughs> yes, <Okay>. yes. <laughs> As for sex, uh, sex is really in wild. And uh, may, sex usually have a narrow distribution area and concentrated in south of China, mm. uh, especially in Guangxi and Yunnan province. All sex are listed uh, under second class protection. Uh, mm. according to the list of state key protected wild plants. Mm. All right, so since we're going into the more serious part of our discussion, I've got a little tool here oh. that I'm bringing out. Uh, so yeah, so I'm just going to put this out here. It's not quite a game situation, but it's just to make it a little bit more fun and encourage our guests. So yeah, okay. I'll, I'll have a few questions and feel free to just like jump in uh, and, and hit the bell uh, when... Yeah, just make it a little bit more competitive. Just you know, okay. see see who Stress. is who wants to, 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 to share their answer. Um, and we also got some contributions for our, our fourth fourth guest, who is not physically here, but who is joining us um, via um, online. Uh, that is James Hitchmo, uh, professor of horticultural ecology at the University of Sheffield in the UK. So he'll be also contributing a few answers. Um, so yeah, so. The obvious big question, why are plants important in our lives? Why are they important for our planet? No. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, the plants can provide us with food mm. and purify the air. Mm. It also can function as window bricks and for sun fixation. Mm. So it's really important in our life and it's an indispensable part of our planet. Mm -hmm. Do you agree? I totally agree, yes. <laughs> <laughs> I want to add something more. And like, we use plants for a thousand years as medicine, different kind of medicine, herb mm. medicine, or some other things, you, you know, uh, to, to cure disease for human beings. Mm -hmm. yeah. Mm. yeah, we use plants in the city as well. Mm -hmm. So we have like a gardens, we got botany gardens, and then we use like indoor plants around us. See? Um, so we like plants, yeah, mm -hmm. as plants is part of our planet. Mm -hmm. Uh, sorry, did you want to add something? Yeah, I do want. <laughs> I'm sorry. Because, you know, I, I love gardening. So, mm. plants for me is not for medicine or for food, mm. it's for joy. Okay. Yeah, bring us happiness. Mm. Yeah. That's good. So, yeah, a lot of uh, different reasons. Actually, we also had an answer from uh, Professor Hitchmo. So, uh, we'll, we'll uh, take the uh, video of that. So, the question is why are plants important to people and, and why are also they important for the world? Well, plants are really important for people because you know, they're a very powerful source of 
feeling well about the world, psychological and, and physical well-being. They, they're often beautiful. They tell us about, about, about change, give us a sense of where we are. Uh, they attract many animals we find very attractive. They often have very beautiful flowers uh, and they produce sort of oxygen that we need to breathe. Um, and in terms of the scale of the planet, uh, most ecosystem processes are very strongly dependent upon, upon plants. Uh, many of the, the drugs and the products that we need to live, the medicines, etc., they come directly or indirectly from, from, from plants. So, so plants really are, you know, absolutely central to human, human, human well-being uh, and also the wellness of the planet. Thank you, Professor Hmo. Um, anything that you'd like to add after? <laughs> He's very professional. <laughs> yeah, I think we, you, he, he mentioned a lot of things that you also yeah. uh, all mentioned, food and medicine, but also just well-being, yeah. uh, psychological uh, well-being. So uh, then the next question, since we're talking about you know, these days a lot about climate change, all, so uh, why is it important to protect endangered species? And are all species equally important? <laughs> uh, we should uh, establish natural reserve mm. and artificial breeding and cultivation and executive exu conservation and so on are effective North measures to protect endangered species. Mm. I think not uh, mm, all plants are important, mm. but Ooh, under, different <laughs> and, mm. under different stages, mm, the focus of our attention we are put on different species. Okay. And, uh, for these species, we are put more money and manpower to protect it, such as which is highly valued in economic mm. and ecological or endangered species. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, I think like, this is really important. Like uh, yesterday, uh, China announced like uh, the first group of five national parks. So uh, we've been in this area before, but and then I think like human being, like uh, lots of activities uh, just like affect the environment and cause the dan danger of not only the plants, but also the animals. So um, dual protection is um, everyone needs to be aware that this is important. And also, um, I think like we need to also re realize like uh, we have a diverse of uh, plants in China. Um, we need to protect that to enhance our own like uh, confidence um, in horticulture or something else because China is the mother of uh, plants uh, in the world. So I think that's really important. And uh, as a designer, as a landscape architect, I think what we also can do is some of these endangered plants can be used in the um, urban landscape, so like a jingle. So I got the leaves, so we like it because it's cheap. So and also the form of the tree, so it's very elegant. So we use that quite a lot for the street trees. So this is a protection for this ancient plant. Mm. We 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 think this is good, it's valuable, so we use this quite a lot. This is another way for protect plants. So we continue working on this. Maybe some of the endangered plants can be well protected in the future. Mm -hmm. But I've noticed this year, this kind of a pest being mm -hmm. very vicious in China. I think the name is like uh, the South American white moth. The yeah. caterpillars are eating the leaves very aggressively, mm -hmm. so they use pesticide everywhere. So is that, is that right to do? I think like uh, if something happens, we have to do something to mm -hmm. treat that uh, the issue. But also we can do like uh, something like a um, kind of a backup. So if, so for example, Let's we think like the table. In this area, we only got one single species which can suffer this disease, and then it will be cause a big problem because 100 percent of plants will be just like got issue mm. uh, or died out. But if we got like uh, say for example 40 uh, different kind of species, woody species uh, from tree to shrub and to some of the herbaceous plants in this area, and then only three percent of uh, plants will have this issue. Mm -hmm. So. If something really happens, we still can just like be strong enough to keep the area um, mm -hmm. and also recover by themselves. So I think like uh, what we can do is in the future, in the planning and design work, we need to think more about like this kind of backup or we do it different way. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, I mean, that's very interesting that, as you said, like there are very different types of conservation methods. Are all helpful? No. No. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Um, some measures, for example, 
we take all species of cycles as, a, as mm -hmm. an example. Uh -huh. Cycles pants for instance. When we set a natural reserve, the population has declined. So after you had a natural reserve, the population declined. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Oh. Seems to defeat the purpose. I know. You know why? <laughs> no. Uh, the, the population, this species is, uh, is in a less competitive position. Okay. In compute community growth. Mm. So if we don't uh, increase some more human disturbance, it will go in extinction. Oh, okay. So uh, it couldn't extinct. fight as much against the other plants. So it needed the humans to take. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I got another case. Um, I remember when I study a PhD in in the UK. Mm -hmm. I yeah. To be honest, uh, Professor James Hishma is my supervisor. Uh -huh. So we travel quite a. Um, uh, a lot of places in Cape Town area, and we saw lots of, this is like a biodiversity area, but lots of species in danger. We saw some species, only like a few plants uh, occur in the wild in a very small patches. But with the climate change, the rainfall and also the temperature change quite a lot. If we do nothing, just protect them, these plants will decline and also will, in some day, will disappear. That's so very what, interesting. Yeah, so what we do is like we found these plants will be very useful for the UK in the future ah. in 2000, in 2050, 2060. So what we do is we collaborate with local um, experts and we get the seed of the plants and we do the propagation in the UK, in Sheffield and in London and these plants is blooming in the UK now. Oh, and so we cool. give the seed to the seed bank in, the, in London. Okay. Of Kew Garden. All right. Well, um, yeah. So I mean, that brings an interesting point. Do you protect an endangered species in the wild, in its natural habitat, or in a greenhouse? I th I think we should protect species in wild, because the wild environment can provide good habitat for plant growth. Mm. So why do we need to um, simulate or external condition in a greenhouse? Mm. But the environment is changing <coughs> too quickly now, right? Yeah. Uh, Beijing this year has been, has been rain. So I, sometimes it's really difficult for some plants to survive. So I think sometimes we do need to put them in a greenhouse to protect them. Or maybe the seed bank. Mm. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, as think, you were mentioning, yeah, the seed yeah, bank. Yeah. Yeah. Various ways. Yeah. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I, I think we were, when we were talking uh, earlier, you mentioned also, yeah, th with the climate changing, yeah. that uh, the the climate is sort of moving north, or like the the plants are moving. Yeah, yeah. 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 So we got true? like a scientific paper. It's a peer reviewed scientific paper showing that in the future, in about like two thousand uh, twenty six day, so Beijing will be Nanjing. Wow. Can you imagine that? Wow. Oh. Yeah. So you feel like rainfall, the annual uh, rainfall is getting more and more, and also like uh, the period of the rain and also dry um, period are quite different from mm. before. And so I think imagine like uh, uh, the green, evergreen species, the leaves with like evergreen in the, in the winter maybe can appear someday in Beijing. Oh wow. wow, so it'll be, so is it that all the species are kind of moving north? Yes, yes. Uh, I think James knows more about that. <laughs> many species, many species. Wow. Yeah, yeah. And some, some species move upslope wow. in mountain. Yeah. Okay, yeah, okay, that also makes sense. Yeah, then uh, I also read something recently that in the Alps, a lot of the uh, researchers are also worried that uh, the certain um, species are also disappearing because now it's getting warmer and usually yeah. they were yeah. used to cold climates. Yeah. So. We, we got one species in our project called like Satisfyrum japonicum. Uh, Chinese name is called Lian Xiang Shu. Very nice, very beautiful name. Yeah. And it's naturally occur in western Sichuan. So the leaf is a hard shape. Oh. Yeah. And in autumn, uh, about this time or just like a, a month later, so the color will change from green to light um, red and dark to Dark right. It's very, very elegant um, plant. So we planted about three years ago in Lotus Park, uh, one of the Beijing's uh, um, urban forest park, and uh, it performs really well. Mm. Um, so this is uh, ranked at, as uh, class two endangered plants in China. Okay. So um, Professor Hitchmo also gave us a contribution on that <laughs> and like how how we can protect uh, plants, especially endangered species, uh, with the climate changing. So let's take a look at that video. So what is the best way to uh, protect uh, plants? Um, 
Well, I mean, the, the best way to do it really is to protect them in their habitats. And so this requires that we, we uh, maintain uh, a sort of high quality, high quality vegetation and we don't destroy it all through agriculture. So when we build new roads and cities, we try to assess the quality of the vegetation uh, and then we make decisions on what we uh, is acceptable to destroy and what is not acceptable to destroy. But generally speaking, you know, we're not really very good at this. And most parts of the world yeah, we have reserved for nature far too small an area to really effectively con conserve uh, plant biodiversity and indeed animal bi biodiversity too. So, you know, we need to conserve more, more land in the future. It's also valuable to conserve uh, land, for example, in, uh, plants in cities, for example, uh, you know, by using a, a wider diversity of species and urban landscapes. And this will make people more aware of diversity and will make them more politically supportive of actually maintaining uh, uh, biodiverse areas in the wild. Okay, thanks Professor Hitchmo for that. Um, yeah, anything you would like to add to what he was saying? I wonder if uh, Beijing becomes managing, what will happen to the tropical area? That's true. <laughs> <laughs> I, I think like uh, um, we need to think about the, the southern part of China. So uh, imagine like uh, the plants of Nanjing can be used in Beijing and uh, the southern part of the plants of China can be used in Nanjing or around Yangtze River. So, this area around the bottom need to find plants outside of China to the even southern part. Okay. So that's a critical issue is about native and non-native species. Oh. Okay. Yeah, so. That's an interesting point because I, th I think for lay people like me, we kind of assume that when we talk about preserving species and protecting them, we think of protecting them in the place where they are now. Mm. And it's interesting what you're saying is that you can also, uh, well, Clearly, the point will be we can protect them, but in a different area because the climate will have changed. So we need to shift them because, well, they will be shifting. Uh, so that's also an, an, an interesting uh, point. Yeah, so that's why as a landscape designer, I also keep on doing quite a lot of researches. Mm -hmm. I think like uh, learning the story, the very, very deep principles behind that is really important. So the whole planet got its own um, just like a way of going. Mm. And as you were saying, uh, as the plants, I guess, move around the planet, then we might need to get plants from different areas and, and bring them in. But then often we talk about plants, exotic plants exactly. being brought in and then invading. Yeah. So how do you strike a balance between bringing in the ones that you need, but at the same time making sure that they don't take over the native species. So that's why research and uh, just like do lots of like experiments is very important. So before we do like real projects um, in the city, we do um, at least a three years um, observation in the fuel stations. Oh, okay. So um, in Beijing, say for example, if we do the project start from 2016, we do like the research is three years before that. Oh, okay. Mm. All right. So yeah. obviously a lot more thought goes into it yeah. than I... Yeah, and then. <laughs> so I want to em um, emphasize one mm. point. is like some of the native species um, will cause in become invasive as well. Really? Yeah. So the reason is like uh, if they just you know, be okay in this area, uh, they feel not very comfortable, but just okay, they can't be invasive. But if they feel it's very, very comfortable here, <laughs> and uh, I can do everything here, so the plants can be really invasive because like uh, um, the seed, the seedlings, uh, they, they produce lots of seed, mm -hmm. and also the survival of seedlings are quite a lot, quite high. So this is uh, something you need to learn more about plants and learn more about ecological background. Mm. Okay. So yeah, it's, it's really, very really important. Yeah, very complex. Because mm. it may result in biological invasion. Yeah. 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 If you don't control it. Mm. Yeah. So we in, in the project we saw one of in the research we saw one of the grass uh, in Chongqing. It's naturally occur on the mountain, but actually it's now very invasive in the city now. Oh wow. Okay. Yeah. Right. Interesting. Um, so yeah, that, I mean that's something else. Uh, a lot of people also in rural areas uh, will be, uh, you know, sometimes pick, especially in China, will we'll use um, rare Chinese medicinal plants uh, and for medicine or to sell. Uh, so how do you strike a balance between plant protection and exploitation? We're talking about rare species, not the ones that you mm -hmm. can find anywhere. I think, uh, for example, uh, wild ginseng or 
those kinds of, of herbs. So how do you strike a balance? Not to buy it. <laughs> <laughs> but it's also these people's, well, you know, um, uh, livelihood sometimes to, you know, in, in certain rural areas, this is what, like, a, a way of also earning money. Um, so... I think if they maintain it under some kind of a, like a level condition, uh, it shall be not too bad, I, th I think. But for me, uh, for example, uh, I keep lots of orchids, mm -hmm. but some people do dig the uh, wild orchids from the big mountains. Mm. I don't tend to buy it at all, and mm. I don't want people to sell it at all. Because first of all, uh, they normally completely die out after you bring them down from the okay, mountains. Yeah. Hmm. Secondly, they are not particularly more beautiful. Mm. Uh, more in most of cases, they are not more beautiful than those botanical like garden ones. Mm. No. So uh, you just keep the ones that are selected by the Mm. Specialties, yeah. Okay. Yeah, I think natural reserve will help mm -hmm. uh, in a certain way. Yeah. That's true. I think we should control market speculation. Okay. Market speculation. Yeah. And avoid over exploit. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. I mean, I, I guess like on the small on the individual level, that is less of a big case. Like exploitation is often you know bigger companies, uh, but it's always something uh, an interesting point to look at. Um, so. The big thing that everybody's talking about these days is always global warming, and you know. So, how is that affecting uh, plant species biodiversity? And Professor Hitchmo also sent us a contribution on this. We've got a video. So, climate change uh, is going to have a significant effect, and, and indeed is having a significant effect on plant biodiversity in the world. And since the, 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 most of the predictions are that the cities and, and landscapes will move approximately a thousand kilometers to the south, many species uh, will find themselves running out of suitable habitat in the future. So we really do need to have national strategic plans for this. Uh, this is not something that can be really dealt with very well locally. So each country needs to have a strategic plan in terms of how it's going to uh, preserve land, which, for example, species could migrate into or in some cases could even be planted into. So it really requires a, a sort of a big picture. Uh, and the traditional ideas of having conservation where you, you essentially have a fence around an area, it doesn't really work very well when, when you've got these massive climatic shifts. So we have to think about different ways to do this in the future. Thanks, Professor Hitchmo. Um, so that's kind of what we were discussing earlier also yeah. about how <laughs> the habitats are shifting, right? Mm -hmm. um, but it's interesting because it makes it sound like it's a bit of a musical chair situation <laughs> that like one area is going to take over from another yeah. is going to take is going to be like a, a, a bit of a chain reaction, I guess. Mm. Mm. Anything else? <laughs> mm. I think it's just like a quite lot of work need to do, and we try to do some lectures and talks online, uh, try to get more people realize this is happening. Mm. Uh, if we don't realize that, if something really happens, so how can we do? So mm. I think this is not only about like uh, um, just like landscape designer, but also about like uh, everyone around this chain, from like university teachers and uh, some students need to read more like scientific paper, and uh, some like uh, nurserymen need to propagate like new plants for new um, for these certain areas, and also the government needs to change the plant list for the guidance. Otherwise, the constructor and the, the designer can't use the new plants. So, so I think everyone needs to do something. It's not mm -hmm. about like, a, yeah, mm -hmm. a group of people. Mm -hmm. That's true. Yeah, everyone needs to do that. And mm -hmm. I think for human beings, because our behavior is influencing everywhere, and like the climate change is because of us. So we somehow I think we need to control ourselves and do not over, over interfere lots of other things. Mm -hmm. Yeah. What are, do you have any tips for like small steps that like individual people can, can be making that might help? I think like uh, some like uh, natural schools um, is really good because like uh, um, this kind of like teaching for a new generation is the outdoors, it's not like uh, learning from a book. 
um, I think like book and radios uh, can help to understand background information, but you need to really go outside to see these real plants and also how this performance in the wild. So if next generation, a whole group of people understand this is important um, and also they can deliver this information to their families, um, this will be even more powerful, mm -hmm. I think, in a, compared to a normal way. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I think it's really important mm -hmm. to go out and see the importance of protect biodiversity, biodiversity. Mm -hmm. Because it's true, uh, even reading about it, and it's not quite the same thing as, as going out and seeing the fact that certain the plants have changed around us, that we don't see the same trees or the same flowers, or the flowers come out at a different time of the year. Yeah. So, uh, you're right, it's... It, yeah, for real. But it's difficult also because when if you're li living in a city, how do you it, how how do you get that first-hand experience? But so so for me, like I'm as as the presentative of those those non-professional <laughs> group, uh, lots of people may not be able to grow more plants, but they, they can try to appreciate more about the landscape and the parks. The, the more and more parks in Beijing and in China, mm. in the world, and then. Uh, uh, just like what I said, you try to control yourself a bit more, like uh, not to waste too much paper, water, electricity, because the more resource you're taking, the less space and resource and the nice environment will be left for the plants mm -hmm. and for the animals, for the rest of the world. So I think, yeah, just uh, uh, give more respect. Think about them like yourself, like a human, like a people. Mm -hmm. Give them personality. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely. Yeah. Um, so to end on a lighter note, we all picked out plants that we liked. Shall we bring them out? So yeah. they all also exemplify just the beauty and diversity of the plant world. So tell me, yeah, what did you pick? Oh, I like that. To be honest, I don't <laughs> know, but I think <laughs> I like the shape. See, it's very elegant. See the shape of this... Uh, um, I, like, I think like a vase and I uh, see the flowers. Um, although I don't like, I don't know how it is, uh, what's the name for that, but mm. I think like uh, something with uh, some like uh, can attract, be attractive on one aspect, we can choose it for landscape. But mm. we also need to um, be aware that like uh, tolerance is very important, the wet tolerance, yeah. the dry tolerance. Yeah, so we need to choose the right plants for the right place. Mm. I like this. She's, <laughs> it's Mini very... Chin. Mini Chin. Oh, yeah. okay. Yeah. Oh, mini bottle too. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. I, like, I like her. She's very el it, 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 She looks like a she. Very elegant. <laughs> <you>. Very elegant. <laughs> so that one, which one did you pick? Oh, it's a beautiful ferns. Ferns. Oh, okay. Oh, these three are angiosperm. Uh -huh. This one is ferns. Oh, okay. Uh, it makes sense for the scientist to be picking an ancient plant that has been around for millions of years, yeah. right? So, but. Yeah, it's, it's still, you know... The, leaf, the leaves are really beautiful. The, the leaves are beautiful. Yeah. I think that's sometimes we overlook when we see orchids. Sorry. <laughs> we see orchids, we see this, some this other, other flowers. It's but, widely yeah. existing in the wild. In the wild, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. And it's, yeah, it's still... I think sometimes we like overlook this, the, the also just like the beautiful the green uh, leaves. So, um, like this. It's so very soft. Yeah. And Eddie, what did you pick? I don't know the English name for this, <laughs> but uh, I really like the leaves because they look like paintings, very pr really, really pretty. Yeah. yeah. Uh, I think this is uh, like a botanical species because in the, uh, in the natural environment, they, it will be a complete uh, green colored. Mm -hmm. So this is selected by the um, uh, specialist and they make them choose those beautiful colored ones. It really does look yeah, like so painted. Just <laughs> <laughs> like somebody just took a white brush. Soft leaves. Yeah, yeah, so it's perfect for putting in the house as one, of, one part of your mm, garden. Yes. So this is my, my like, taste of things. Yeah. <laughs> very elegant also. It's, it's just, very pretty, it's, yeah. do you, do, does it have flowers? No, it's I just, think it's uh, when it's happy, it will have white <laughs> flowers. I, ha okay. I have yeah. never seen this, seen this flower. You've never seen this? Yeah, yeah. Oh, we've got a, a premiere. <laughs> <laughs> so I think the leaves are attractive enough. Yeah, yeah, exactly, yeah. I like yeah. it very much. Yeah, and then I went for this one because I found it very unusual. It seems to be growing sideways for some reason. <laughs> Not sideways. <laughs> yeah, it's growing wrong direction. And then, and I just kind of like the colors, the the, the little polka dots, the, the the red on the on the green. Although that also makes me think that possibly it's poisonous. 
It's so, not, not a poison. No, not poison. Okay, okay thank you. <laughs> but it, really beautiful. <laughs> it is. It is beautiful. But uh, yeah, sometimes the the most beautiful ones are the most poisonous. Yeah, right. Ones, right? And, and, <laughs> and close or moist environment. Moist. Oh, environment. okay. All right. So this in is wild, the, in wild. In wild. Oh, so it's okay. A begonia. Begonia. Yeah. Okay. So hmm. like f in humid places, or do you know? In humid yes. like in places oh. that are very yeah, yeah very moist. Moist. Very, yeah. Moist. Uh, yeah. Okay. Well, anyway, I'm, I also do not know the uh, name of this. So if somebody can contribute to this, begonia, be begonia. Is this a begonia? Yeah, begonia. It is a begonia. <laughs> yeah, yeah, this one also is, is begonia. <laughs> oh, the same okay. Genus. I just noticed it has got a little one little flower here. See? Wow, okay. Because so the leaves is similar. Uh -huh, leaves yeah. is similar, but this but one this is bigger. Yeah, this See, smaller. plants that look similar to me are not of the same family, and others are the same family and don't look <laughs> to me like the same thing. So uh, clearly, I am not at all uh, meant for that. But that is why I have guests like you. So just like, um, to, to finish off, what do you think? Are you hopeful about plant biodiversity? Can we protect it? Definitely, yes. We definitely need to protect it. And uh, we are protecting it. Yeah. Yeah. We, I think everybody knows it's plants are very important for us. Mm -hmm. yeah. So uh, I, I definitely have the hope we can do it very well. Yeah. Okay. I majored in the biodiversity conservation and I will do more work in the future. <laughs> <laughs> are you hopeful? Do you think that the world will do more? Yeah. Yeah? yeah. Yeah. Okay. I'm very positive on that, and I think like uh, um, I like uh, everyone here, and also the audience uh, behind the camera. So you, you also can realize it's important. Yeah, awareness, and then confidence, and then we know how to do that. Great. Um, so yeah. So what about you at home? What do you think? Do you also think that we can uh, protect our plant biodiversity? Um, that about wraps it up for today. Uh, thank you to my guests for joining me for this really interesting conversation. And thank you at home for watching. Uh, that's going to be it for today. Join us next time. Bye.